President Joe Biden opened the Summit of the Americas in downtown L.A. tonight. But before the summit even started, well, there was some uh, controversy that stirred up. The Biden administration did not invite the leaders of Cuba, Nicaragua and Venezuela, resulting in some high profile snubs. We are now less than a week out mm -hmm. of this and you still haven't decided whether to invite anyone from yeah. Venezuela, including the opposition leader who you recognize as the president. I think if you've been following this administration for the past year and a half, one week is not the 11th hour when it comes to uh, when it comes to, um, you know, how things move. You want to talk about human rights? Listen to the people on the street. We will never have the last word. The people will have the last word in whatever form it takes. Salute you all. Let me talk with you. We started talking to organizers immediately over the phone. What, what spaces can we begin looking for? Because we need a space that can gather thousands of people. And a beautiful journey started, which I think brought many of us who are not from Los Angeles into building and contacting and, and actually becoming quite close with a variety of organizations and struggles here locally in Los Angeles. We've been working with all of these amazing coalition organizations and then we had this amazing crew of volunteers throughout the whole summit and leading up to today. And I was looking at the numbers, I think we had over 300 volunteers over the course of the three days putting in the work and just hundreds and hundreds of shifts that we were managing to make sure that every um, moment of the summit was covered. Every time the OAS holds a Summit of the Americas, there's a strong counter summit. And when we found out that this was going to be held in the U.S. for the first time since 1994, we we're immediately like, okay, we have to do this. We have to have a strong counter summit in the United States. We have to show the whole region that it doesn't matter where they hold it, even if it's held in the belly of the beast, we're going to still show a strong anti-imperialist, progressive voice. <laughs> fighting against the exclusive Summit of the Americas, the summit of the rich and powerful. And we are sick and tired of the U.S. government waging destruction across the continent, in our city, across the world. And we want dignity and we want humanity. It was perfect that the Summit of the Americas was happening here because we could actually tie the day-to-day -day issues of people in Los Angeles, of the U.S. and of our continent to this larger imperialist project. Over 250 organizations representing workers, immigrants, women, black and indigenous peoples and the LGBTQIA plus communities and many other communities in struggle come together to share a vision of a future that is inclusive and grounded on the principle of solidarity. We come here to let the Summit of the Americas know that their gathering is insignificant and irrelevant to the humanity and the survival of black people all over the world. Sabemos que nuestros hermanos de la raza negra están excluidos de esto por causa del espíritu de racismo y de exclusividad que existe en este país han sido excluidos del diálogo. Es tiempo de los pueblos, es tiempo de unidad, no de división. Es tiempo de decisiones conjuntas y no de imposiciones unilaterales. La democracia Made in USA, no hecha en Estados Unidos, ha significado durante décadas el asesinato sistemático de las y los históricamente excluidos. Ha significado un golpe de Estado a Salvador Allende, un golpe de Estado a Manuel Zelaya, ha significado un golpe a Evo Morales, pero sobre todo a sus pueblos. Los Angeles is really an empty dream. There's a lot of amazing, wonderful people who come here and have so much like fire, um, but life here is hard. Standard of living is hard. Housing is hard. You have ICE cracking down on our communities. You have 
LAPD cracking down on street vendors, like people who are just trying to survive here. It's just very difficult. So it's, it's honestly a joke that Biden wants to come here, wanted to come here to make an example of what to sell to the rest of the Americas. You can't go around dictating policies anywhere else when you can't even fix the problems here in Los Angeles. So if you could uh, send a message to President Biden, what would you tell him? Would it be a political message or can it be a hand gesture? It could, it could, it could be. I <laughs> the fact that he's not uh, answering the homeless and overlooking it as if poverty is not going on in our country and in our state is what irritates me the most about it. It's like, oh, we see the homeless every day, but we don't see them. They're ghosts, but we got money to go and fight other wars. It don't make no sense to me at all. I think it's an absolute hypocrisy to, for Biden to be uh, running his summit uh, for democracy across the street when it's actually excluding these people's democracies. If they really want to make a change, then they should start with their policies and not just claiming and using social movements um, for their benefit because people are tired. I mean, right here in LA, you see the decay of uh, American democracy. Just the sheer amount of homelessness, the lack of affordable housing, the inflation, uh, it's hard to make a living out here. It's one of the most expensive places in the country. Uh, so if this is the, the shining beacon of democracy that America wants to show to the rest of the world, it's, I think it's gonna fall pretty flat on a lot of people. My grandmother is a survivor of domestic violence. She's an immigrant woman. She's a single mother. She's a fast, she was a fast food worker. And here in Long Beach, she had an accident. And after that accident, she had a disability. And I remember those feelings. And I remember, I'm so proud of her. You know, the pride of like going through things and still not giving up, even though everything is stacked up against you, not giving up. And when I learned and I started getting more involved in politics, then I got pissed. Because I realized that all of those hardships were unnecessary. You work here, right? But the minute that something happens to you, then you're garbage. Then they throw you aside. And all of us in this room have stories like that. The thing that I learned is that it's not just our individual story, that it's millions of people who are living like that, unnecessarily suffering. Why? Capitalism. Biden, who campaigned on the idea that there would be a new era in relations with Latin America, he tries to rephrase how he sees Latin America and publicly fumbles and doesn't know whether to call it its backyard or its front yard. The U.S. government knew immediately that the threat of having Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua present in a summit of the Americas in the United States had the potential of having millions of people possibly have access to the first time to the voices, to the words, to the demonstrations, the actions of these progressive Latin American leaders. Therefore, they had to be excluded. country. You have no right to lecture anyone in the world about democracy and human rights. They failed to calculate that this exclusion would cost them, not a summit, but it would cost them any remainder they had of credibility and hegemony in the region. It's a big challenge for all of us in America to keep the journalists safe, to keep journalism safe, not to be threatened, not to be under pressure. It's a continent that we, we have been discriminating a lot in the past. Uh, uh, Luis Almagro, you have blood on your hands. Because of your lies, there was a coup in Bolivia, a coup against the democratically elected government, 
and that dictatorship that you helped install massacred 36 people, 36 innocent people who are protesting for the restoration of their democracy, for the restoration of the independence of their country, to the whole hemisphere about democracy and the freedom of the press. Sir. When Sebastian sir. Moro, an sir. Argentine sir. journalist who is in Bolivia, an Argentine journalist who is in Bolivia, exposing the Let's truth go. about the coup, and he was Let's killed. Let's Let's killed. You're here to lecture about media freedom. Would you install the dictatorship that murders journalists and murders innocent people, workers, indigenous people, students, you? We have the power. We know we have the power. We need to organize to exert and show them our what? Power. Because whatever catastrophe it is, it will never have the last word. The people will have the last word in whatever form it takes. None of us can allow hatred and fear to empty our hearts and our minds. Our hearts and our minds should be full of love. We have the presidents of Cuba and Venezuela joining us, and we have Evo Morales, former president of Bolivia, also joining us. No me equivoqué cuando dije que yo no estaría en la cumbre de las Américas, pero que sí estaría la voz de Cuba. Ustedes son nuestra voz. La revolución siempre lo ha tenido muy claro. Una nueva humanidad es posible. Por eso es que felicito a todos los organizadores de la cumbre de los pueblos en Los Ángeles. Antes daba miedo ser expulsado de la OEA. Ahora retirarnos es digno y sano de la OEA. There was a sense through all of the presentations until the very end. I felt like the room was unified and usually when the left or progressive forces come together, there's a lot of focusing on our differences and the amount of unity and solidarity and compassion that I was feeling in the room from people was overwhelming. Every revolution that takes place throughout history, every revolution, beforehand people say revolution is impossible, radical change is impossible, the people are too apathetic, they're too tired, they're too busy surviving, or they're too scared of the state, too scared of the cops, too scared of the military. And then revolutions happen, and afterwards, everyone says, wow, we knew that was coming. The empire says that we cannot march, but we have the higher permit right. of the sovereignty of the people. We march on the empire. continue to demonstrate into the evening blocking streets in downtown LA. Protesters hoping to have their voices heard on a range of topics before the leaders head home. Hemos tenido tres días de programación excitante, informativo, and now we're gonna go march to the Civic Center. We're going to show the leaders of the Americas that we cannot continue doing what we've been doing for decades. That ultimately we need justice for people all across this continent from Tierra del Fuego to Alaska. Do we agree with that today? All the peoples of this continent face a common dilemma, which is the destruction of our planet at the hands of capital and its corporations who have been given full license by national governments to destroy the planet in order to make exorbitant profits and therefore a threat to humanity itself. And the dilemma poses itself in that we are either going to fight together against the common enemy who sees itself represented in the buildings of Washington DC, the White House, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Pentagon, or do we perish lonely by ourselves fighting what we think are the enemies? The moment has come, and I think this People Summit has created a basis for a renewed conversation and the mending of what are truly historic bonds between the peoples of this continent. Jose Martí, who coined the term Nuestra América, didn't speak of Nuestra América starting at the U.S.-Mexico border all the way to Patagonia. He spoke of a Nuestra América that went from tip to tip, 
from coast to coast because he knew and understood in his own time of struggle that without the unity of our peoples, we would not be able to destroy that mythical monster that he referred to as El Gigante de Siete Luegas. El pueblo vive! La lucha sigue! El pueblo...